Hey, it's Kevin from Pork Pie Hatters. Um, we're going to talk about putting hat bands on hats today. I've had uh, a couple of people ask me about that. Now, there are basically two different type of hat bands that you can put on your hat. Um, the band is this little ribbon right over here. Now, um, yes, it's decorative. It gives it a certain look. Um, you know, certain hats have uh, leather. Others have wide bands. Some of them have, you know, like a little bit of skinnier band on there. Um, yes, it does serve a purpose. It's a very functional part of the hat. Basically, this is the part here that's making contact with my head, right here. Not up here, not down here, but right here only. Now, uh, as the hat becomes older, uh, you're going to perspire through the hat. It's just uh, the natural lifespan of a hat. It starts off not sweaty eventually it gets sweaty when it's old uh, it's unpleasant but uh, unavoidable now the idea of the band is that if you do manage to perspire all the way through the inner bands the hat felt and the outer bands um, this catches the sweat and it, it keeps it from permeating further into the felt and staining the felt uh, what you get is a ring of sweat here and another ring of sweat here and you know like a salty band that's just you know covered in dirt too. The idea is when it hits the, um, the grow grain ribbon this kind of captures the perspiration and it spreads it evenly throughout the band and kind of soaks it up it wicks it away from the felt so uh, if you manage to get perspiration on the felt, you can't really clean it. Um, most of the time, it's just, you can't do it. Um, it's a sweat stain and it's too late. The band is a preventative measure. Um, as soon as you see that this band is stained, it's salty, it's got some kind of discoloration, it's telling you now it's time to change the band. You take this off and you change it for 10 bucks, the hat felt lives on. There's no stain here. You just toss this away, you change it. The same thing goes for the inner bands. That uh, you can change. Um, it's not expensive. Uh, it's like 20 bucks or so. We could put a ribbon inside there or we could put a piece of leather. Um, a leather sweatband is going to block more perspiration. It also has the advantage of feeling comfortable. It breaks in and takes the shape of a person's head, oval, round, etc. And um, you could also wipe it down and keep it pers uh, perspiration free. Um, if you're uh, at a restaurant, you cool off, uh, you know, you've got your Panama hat on, you cool off in the air conditioning. If you've got a cloth sweatband on the inside, it remains wet, cold, sweaty. If you have a leather sweatband on the inside, you can take a hanky and wipe it, clean it off. So in ways, it's a lot more sanitary to have leather, but leather is also hotter. It's thicker, uh, less comfortable for some people. The ribbon is going to be softer. A lot of times if you have a crushable hat, they don't put leather inside. That's not done to keep the price down. It's done on purpose so that you can fold it. So no leather band, no lining on the inside means easily fold. Okay, getting back to the outer bands. Now if you want to change a band, our two choices are either clip-on bands or sew-on bands. This is a sew-on band. Uh, better hats generally have bands that are sewn on with little tack stitches. Um, cheaper hats will usually use glue. Um, but you do have the option of clipping bands right over it and giving your hat different looks. For instance, I was just holding this uh, burgundy hat right here. Okay, this one. Now, uh, let's say you want to give this a different look. I don't know, just for one day. Now you've got this three pleat band. The band has one, two, three pleats. You could make it the full width or you can make it a little narrower, which I like to do most of the times. Fold one pleat back. Clip on bands are usually about 10 bucks. They're cotton. They're also available in like a satin silk, which is a little shiny. Okay, this is what we do. There's a rougher end, it's unfinished. And then there's a more finished end that has a little triangle on the end. What you're going to do is you're going to finish up with the triangle, the more decorative end. The rougher end is going to go underneath and hidden. It's going to be hidden. So you start on the left, right at the bow here. Go to the front of the bow. That'll be at the left side, your left side of the hat. What you do is you just take, there's a little hook. 
little metal hook. The hook just hooks right behind the bow, so there's no holes in the hat, no hat surgery. Okay, what you do is you hook it behind the bow and you go back behind the hat. You wrap it around, keeping it flush with the brim line there at the bottom. Start at the back, wrap it around. This is two pleats wide. And then, yeah, you have a black band. Maybe you want to just change it for the evening. A lot of people do this with Panama hats. Uh, they'll take the Panama hat with a black uh, band like this, and then they'll buy a bunch of other bands, a navy, a green, a brown, a gray, to match their outfits. But um, at the very end, you might have to give it a little karate chop like this just to sort of lower it in case there's a little space showing. Okay. Good. That is clip-on bands. Uh, there you go. Now they look pretty good. They don't have a bow. Um, a lot of these grow grain uh, sewn on bands have a bow on the side. Some people don't like the bows. They feel like they're not masculine or something. Um, I'm pretty much, I don't know, uh, on the fence. It doesn't really matter either way to me, I guess. Uh, it's not good or bad. A bow to me is just, it's, it's there and it doesn't look masculine or feminine to me. It's, traditional yeah. and um, I think it gives a hat a little bit more of a polished look but it's you know it's a very stereotypical kind of a dress hat 1940s uh, thing some people like simplicity this has no bow it just crosses over um, okay let's go over that again fold back a pleat make it narrower if you want to Start on the left side of the hat where the bow is. In the front of the bow, take the clip, put it behind, go around the back. All right. Now, when you get to the end, you want to give it a little, little tug, just a little pull, gentle, because when you stick it into the the last hook, what you're going to do is you're going to stick that hook into the uh, band itself. You're going to spike the band, make a little hole in it, and every time you go back into that same hole. But you want to give it a little pull, not a huge pull because then the hat will actually be tighter. Spike the hat band, but not the hat felt itself. Don't go that deep. And that's it. Go around. If there's any uh, thing showing at the bottom there, you just want to do these karate chops. Because if you start pushing it, you're going to mess the pleats up. So. Go in a downward motion, gently, carefully. There it is. Again, the 10 box, um, I've got like a huge um, array of colors. Uh, what do I have here? Gray, black, brown. I've got a butterscotch, an off-white, navy, red, burgundy, light orange, uh, lavender, dark burnt orange, pink, purple, uh, kelly green, olive green, green and black striped, light yellow, bright white, um, and a khaki color. There's a lot of colors available. There are more, too, that I can special order for you. Um, as far as the more finished sew-on bands, um, that you have to leave your hat here you know, for a few days. It's possible like a week or so depending on how backed up we are, but um, I was just fixing some hats here. Uh, anyway, um, that you could do almost anything. You could do a real narrow one, you could do a very, very wide band, you could do a bow in the back if you want to get cool, a double bow, a double band, you could have stripes, three stripes, two stripes, super wide, super thin, you could put a leather, uh, we have black, we have brown leather, wide, narrow leathers. We have braided suede, braided leather bands. We have different feather bands. Uh, I believe we have pheasant, guinea hen, and the peacock. Um, it's unlimited what kind of bands could be done. If you bring your hat and you let us keep it for a few days, um, we can do a lot. You can customize your hat in many ways. Um, brims can be cut if you want to go from this two and a half inch brim to a two to a one, or to just a nothing, teeny tiny, but we could do it all. Um, generally, that involves cutting and also putting the curve back in. We could re-flange re or block the brim. 
uh, when you cut off most of the brim, you're cutting off all the curved part and you're left with just straightness. So it'll just jut out straight. So they got to put a new little shallow curve in it. It's not that expensive. Uh, so if you want to redo your hat with a new band, uh, cut the brim, maybe put some ribbon on the edge of the brim to match the ribbon, kind of like I've got here, black and black, we can do that. Uh, you can have this lime green and this shocking purple, um, whatever you want to do. It's uh, Modifying hats is quite easy. You just have to be prepared to leave your hat here and be without it for a little while. Uh, it could take a week, it could take two weeks, um, but it would be done cleanly and to your specs perfectly. Uh, any other questions about bands? Now, um, personally, my uh, my specialty is reshaping hats. Uh, you know, doing stuff with steam, reshaping, cleaning them. But um, things like sewing with uh, needles and threads, I'm not that adept. Uh, I don't have the great skills, so I'd rather let somebody else demonstrate sewing on a band to you. Um, I have to be honest, I can do it, but, you know, I, I don't have great, great skills. Um, it generally just involves, uh, you know, getting a yard of ribbon. We call it grow grain. Grow grain ribbon is what you want to buy. You don't want to buy something that's so wide that it's going to go up into the pinch here. It's got to be the right width, but it can be narrow if you'd like. Um, there's a cross piece here, which covers the, uh, there's a seam, because you're wrapping it around, and that's where it's cut. So the cross piece covers the seam. You can have pleats here no pleats, it could be flat. Uh, you could have a big square here, a little thin square. You could have a double band. Uh, I'll give you an example of a double band. There's a double. Uh, double band is just a little bit more work. There's just two bows there. Double bow, excuse me. I said double band. If you want a double bow, it doesn't cost any more. Um, just a little fancier. You just ask for a double bow, a single bow. Um, we could put a wind cord on if you like a little elastic here that acts like a tether. Um, this is uh, kind of interesting. If you don't know what that is, a wind cord is very interesting. Um, this dates back to the old days when guys used to ride trolley cars and stuff. It's an elastic cord, comes off your crown and goes through that little lapel buttonhole where you put the carnations right there and stuff. So that way, uh, if you're walking home in the wind, you're holding an umbrella here, and your attache case, you don't have a third arm to hold your brim and keep it on in the wind. So if your hat does get away from you, this little tether basically uh, keeps it from blowing away. And that's the reason why you have those little buttonholes on your lapels of your overcoats and jackets. For wind cords, like this, uh, otherwise known as a trolley cord, um, they're kind of slang names for them, a trolley cord and stuff. It's like, you know, what the old timers call them. But uh, it goes over the top of your hat, kind of like a slip knot effect. And um, that's it, you know, it's uh, not really a difficult thing. Some people like a, uh, a wind cord on the hat. Other people think they're an annoyance because they tend to sort of ride up sometimes. Um, okay. The wind cord stays in a slot right over here between the brim and the band. Now, they do have a habit of riding up like that. So, if you don't like it and it's just annoying, you could cut it off if you have one. Just get a razor or something. If you think